So it is rainy and windy outside right now, so I'm going to start this episode inside and probably head out in a little bit. But that's probably a good thing because I'm actually talking about houseplants. Okay, so for those of you that are new, I'm Tom, this is Aspect Science, and this sorry looking guy is called Iggy. Now, some of you might actually recognize him because about a year ago when he was looking a lot better than he is now, you helped name him over on Instagram. Okay, so clearly I'm not very good at keeping my plants alive, but that doesn't mean that I don't like them. I mean, like a lot of other people, I love a little bit of greenery on my desk, but look, I've got one right here. This dude's called Kevin, named by you guys again. And I love them around the house. You see, plants are really important to us humans, and we've been chucking them in pots and decorating our spaces with them for a surprising amount of time, at least as far back as 400 BC in Egypt. And the reasons for doing it range from showing off wealth to just growing some herbs. But more recently, it's become associated with this idea of clean living and the thought that these houseplants could detoxify the air that we're breathing when we're indoors. But is this piece of common knowledge actually true? Can houseplants like a healthier version of Iggy here actually clean the air that we're breathing when we're inside? The idea of using plants for something like this falls under the definition of something known as phytoremediation, which is the use of living plants and the microorganisms that are associated with them to clean up soil and air and water by removing toxic contaminants or simply by making the contaminants harmless. The air in our homes and in our indoor spaces is filled with a massive range of pollutants like carbon dioxide, ozone, and volatile organic compounds like formaldehyde. And they're all coming from a range of different sources, including a bunch of household products and even the paint that we put on our walls. Exposure to these contaminants can lead to a whole range of different health problems like cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. And with people in industrialized countries potentially spending around 80% of their time indoors, you can probably tell why people want to ensure that the air that they're breathing when they're inside these spaces is as clean as possible. And what's important to note is that for at least some of these pollutants, standard sort of household air filters, they can't actually remove them from the air. All right, but can plants actually be the solution? How can these things work as filters? You see, plants have tiny pores called stomata that open and close. Now during photosynthesis, these pores are used for gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. But these same stomata openings are also one of the key ways that plants can actually uptake air pollutants, along with other methods, including through their root soil systems, where microorganisms in the soil can play important roles. And a bunch of studies, including a famous study by NASA back in the 80s, have shown that through these methods, plants can actually remove harmful contaminants from the air. Now there are a lot of articles online that claim that these studies mean that plants can be a good natural solution to filtering your air from toxic contaminants. But this isn't exactly true. You see, these studies are generally performed in controlled, airtight laboratory conditions, some within what are essentially tiny containers sealed off from the entire world. Now this is obviously a massive exaggeration and this isn't how the studies are performed, but the point is that these studies don't really show us the effects of these plants in entire rooms, and definitely not in an entire building. One of the most important things to keep in mind is that the air in your room and in your house and in an indoor space is not stationary, it's dynamic and moving constantly. In a lot of cases, the air inside a house can completely turn over and exchange with outside air every hour. Now in order to have the same air cleaning capacity as this, it's estimated that in a space that's around 10 by 10 meters, you'd need around 1000 houseplants. Probably not too feasible for at least most of us. The key reason that you'd need so many of these plants comes down to surface area. There are just so many things in your home that add to the surface area for potential sources and sinks of pollutants. I mean, there's so many that they completely dwarf the surface area of your plant and essentially make them have pretty much zero effect. Okay, so what does this actually mean? Does it mean that you should just abandon your houseplants? Well, the simple answer is no. Which reminds me actually, I need to go get a replacement plant for Iggy. It's still raining outside, but what are you gonna do? Yep, 
it's still raining. There is a whole heap of evidence for a range of benefits that come from having houseplants and just surrounding yourself with a little bit of greenery and nature, including reducing stress and improving your overall mood and even improving your cognitive ability. And ultimately, if you just like being surrounded by plants and, you know, having something to care for, then go for it. Thank you very much. No Cheers. Have a good day. When it comes to using them as air filters, there are actually teams that are working on discovering and genetically engineering plants and systems that could be better at removing pollutants from the air. But for now at least, it seems like the best and most natural option is to simply just open your windows and let a little bit of air in. And simply just enjoy your houseplants for what they are. Alright, Iggy, I think it's time that we deal with you mate. <laughs>